Welcome to EPG Patshala. We are discussing today the course on social policy. The module under discussion is Affirmative Action Policies. My name is Sohini Sen Gupta and I am a faculty in the School of Social Work at the Tata Institute of Social Sciences, Mumbai. Historically, equality laws served, have served as the basis of affirmative action policies and they have been inserted in the constitutions of many countries of the world. The Indian constitution has mandated affirmative action policies for groups and people who have experienced historical injustice. The affirmative action reserves a portion of seats in the government elected bodies, public employment and institutions of higher education for groups who have deemed to have suffered from social and economic disadvantages historically and who continue to face discrimination in contemporary society. The objectives of this module are to learn about the concept of affirmative action, to understand the legal and normative basis of affirmative action policies, to understand the debates for and against affirmative action and also to look at some specific laws and policies in the context of India. We should begin, into, to, we should begin with the understanding of where affirmative action uh, originates, originates. Why is, and also we should try to understand why affirmative action policies is one of the central concerns of social policy. Affirmative action policies are linked to different types of equality laws. Traditionally, the criteria that have shaped equality laws in different countries has been the, uh, the criteria or the category of race or gender or ethnicity or caste. The other forms of inequality like disability or sexual orientation have been included after prolonged contest and organization. Through affirmative action, attempts are made to improve the education and employment opportunities to pre-designated vulnerable sections of the society. The idea is, the, the premise is, societies are inherently unequal and within this unequal society, some groups are exceptionally marginalized because for a really long time and over a long period of time, historically they have experienced oppression and discrimination from other more well-endowed or privileged sections of the society. And as a consequence, these groups have suffered severe disadvantages, which has made them unable to reach the kind of living standards or the kind of social opportunities or the kind of capabilities, if we use uh, Sen's uh, formulation, to attain the kind of lives that they, they could have if they had not faced these discriminations and these oppressive, oppressive conditions. So the essence of affirmative action is to create a more equal society. Now equality means more than treating likes alike. It includes ideas such as creating substantive equality, uh, preventing or prohibiting direct and indirect indiscrimination, and measures that can be undertaken to create positive discrimination for those deemed to be disadvantaged. Equality essentially therefore means that we may need to discriminate positively against those who have been previously disadvantaged in order to actually create justice. In the United States, the landmark historical ruling by the Supreme Court, which is uh, often cited as one of the key examples of affirmative action policies, is Brown versus the Board of Education. This was a landmark judgment based on the value of equality and it's often used to demonstrate what equality really means in the context of affirmative action. The decision declared the segregation of schools on the basis of race as inherently unequal and unconstitutional. The judgment inspired the civil rights movement and the struggle for equal citizenship rights for all African Americans and other minority groups. And it defined broadly racial discrimination as unconstitutional. How are groups selected for affirmative action in the context of India? Indian constitution has mandated affirmative action policies for groups and people who have experienced historical injustice. Many members of the communities in, 
Initially, in the early period, it was mainly the members of community who are designated as the scheduled castes and scheduled tribes and other backward castes under the Indian constitution who have been the recipients of quota-based access to elected bodies, education and employment in independent India. In recent times, reservation has been expanded to one third of seats in elected government bodies for women. There is an ongoing debate about the identification and inclusion of newer groups such as Muslim religious minorities, persons with disability and the transgender people. Examples of affirmative action policies. In the United States, the Civil Rights Act of 1964 prohibits discrimination on specified grounds on employment and access to public services. The Canadian Human Rights Act prohibits discrimination in employment and delivery of goods and services. In India, the affirmative action has created reservation in public employment and education. In South Africa, the Employment Equity Act, the Promotion of Equality and Prevention of Discrimination Act is an example of a similar type of legislation which has been created to remedy the wrongs of uh, the discriminatory apartheid era in the context uh, based on racial discrimination that existed in South Africa till the 1990s. Equality laws of different nations are supported by various international conventions on human rights. These include International Convention on Civil and Political Rights, International Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Racial Discrimination, Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, Convention on the Rights of the Child, International Covenant on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights, and the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disability. Who is bound by equality laws? Basically, what it essentially means that if uh, international human rights laws, although many nations are signatory to it, eventually cannot have much effect unless national governments create legislation suitable to their context, informed by the broader values, ideals and goals of International Convention on Human Rights. Similarly, within national context, governments need to specify which institutions, which organizations, uh, apart from publicly provided uh, institutions, public services and public institutions are bound by such equality laws. While human rights at the constitutional level only binds the government, state, non-state entities such as the private sector are in some cases potentially or mis specifically bound by equality laws in national contexts. In India, Article 17 of the Indian Constitution prohibits discrimination on the basis of caste uh, in both private and public sectors. Exactly where is equality located in the Constitution of India? Article 14 states that the state shall not deny any person equality before the law or the equal protection of the law within the territory of India. Article 15 provides that the state shall not discriminate against any citizen and no citizen on the specific grounds be subject to any disability, liability, restriction or condition with regards to access to shops, public restaurant, hotels and places of public entertainment, the use of wells, tanks, bathing huts, roads and places of public resort maintained wholly or partly out of state funds or dedicated to the use of general public. Article 16 provides for equal opportunity for all citizens in relation to employment or appointment to an office under the state and prohibits discrimination on the specified grounds in relation to state employment or office. The constitution also allows for special provisions to be made for women, children, socially and educationally backward classes of citizen as well as the scheduled castes and the scheduled tribes. The constitutional 74th amendment 1992 brought in provisions mandating one-third reservation for women in local government bodies. What are the arguments for creating positive discrimination, which is essentially what affirmative action uh, tries to do? Um, one argument is uh, the argument based on uh, the experience of historical injustice and how national government and uh, global international bodies and watchdogs, it is their responsibility to ensure that such injustices a, are not repeated in the modern context and also reparations are made for these injustices committed to people. Remediation is defined as the moral justification aimed at righting past wrongs. It emphasizes corrective action to rectify unfair treatment by race, caste, ethnicity and sex. 
reservation and quotas are some instruments that serve to compensate for social disadvantage and economic disparities and inequalities due to past and present discrimination. Therefore, discrimination uh, on the on based on any category, any criteria is seen as the basis for creating remedial action. So remediation is one of the arguments that are made for why we need to have affirmative action policies. Economic efficiency uh, provides a more instrumental justification. Uh, this argues that every society needs more people, people from all possible cultural and disadvantaged groups to join the workforce and contribute to the economy. Creating role models in the economy, what it basically means is when um, particular individuals from disadvantaged social groups succeed in, um, in, in doing well for themselves and improving their uh, economic conditions, they act as a role models for other people and this essentially prevents disaffection and creates social and political stability so that um, citizens uh, continue to cohere and uh, leads to a more cohesive nation. So the economic efficiency argument is uh, essentially not just about achieving any uh, high moral goal of uh, writing past wrongs, but essentially to create um, an even or fair playing field for everybody in order for society to survive and society to progress and for everybody to basically be wealthy together. Diversity promotion is the third argument. Uh, this is another instrumental argument just like economic efficiency but the focus here is that the flow of educational benefits from highly diverse student bodies and richer learning environments. So diversity in educational environment, diversity in workplaces uh, through affirmative action policy would actually benefit everybody because people learn from these different multicultural uh, knowledge and experience that would hence uh, come to these forums. The social justice argument emphasizes the intrinsic value of racial integration, elimination of institutionalized inequalities and equity in democratic participation. The reservation policies in India are based on social justice concerns and are constitutionally mandated expanding uh, the context of people's choice or, or adding to their capabilities. The special provisions are made in the Indian constitution for two categories of disadvantaged groups primarily, scheduled castes and scheduled tribes as specified by the president. If you look at the scheduled caste communities in India, and um, you can get this data from the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment's website, 1208 communities are presently notified as scheduled castes. Groups notified at scheduled tribes number 705 and you can get this information from the Ministry of Tribal Affairs website. Within this, 75 communities are further classified as particularly vulnerable tribal group or PBTGs. Those notified as other backward caste OBC number 1963, socially and educationally backward caste or other backward classes are to be specified by the National Commission for Backward Classes under Article 341. What this essentially means is that individuals who identify as members of these broadly identified communities uh, and but they have to be notified as such in uh, these special lists for them to become eligible uh, for affirmative action policies. Communities such as any caste, race, tribes or groups classified under Article 341 of the Indian Constitution are deemed to be scheduled caste SC and referred to as that, as that under Article 366.24. Communities classified under Article 342 of the Indian Constitution are deemed to be scheduled tribes and referred to as such under Article 366.25 of the same. So all those groups and individuals who all those groups who identify themselves as members of scheduled caste or scheduled tribes and hence uh, to become eligible for affirmative action policies would have to be have to have their names uh, listed under these uh, concerned articles in the Indian constitution. 
Some of the characteristics of scheduled tribes identified by earlier government committees include distinct cultures, geographic isolation and backwardness. The scheduled tribe number 104.3 million people and comprise 8.6% of the nation's population and live mostly in central and northeastern parts of the country in rural areas. The scheduled caste communities is more widely dispersed among states and they are, they are present in both rural and urban areas. Reservation in government bodies. Article 330 of the Constitution provides reservation of seats in the House of Parliament for scheduled castes and scheduled tribe people. Seats in the state legislative assemblies are reserved for these groups under Article 332. Reservations are also provided in rural and urban local bodies under Article 243D and 243T respectively. Let us look at the constitutional debates about uh, identifying uh, people as become eligible to become eligible for um, affirmative action. In the constitutional debates that took place in the 1950s, some speakers argued that the preferential treatment should be directed towards all those who are economically poor. However, for the others, the main concern was to provide preferential treatment to offset social inequalities of caste and community, which were viewed as underlying and hence compounding the issue of economic difference. The understanding was, while pe people may be economically uh, poorer or better off uh, based on their performance in, in, in the economy, uh, historical injustices create social inequalities and therefore it's social inequalities and not economic inequality which should be viewed as, as, the, as the basis for creating affirmative action. In the 1950s, the dominant political point of view was for special redistributive measures to offset inequalities associated with caste, while general development programs would take care of other forms of inequalities like economic inequalities. Therefore, social policies uh, which are uh, typically about affirmative actions are directed only towards some categories of highly disadvantaged groups in the society. The debate, the controversial debate about whether economic inequality or social inequality should be the basis for creation of affirmative action has uh, flown into other forms of controversy and especially in the identification and classification of other forms of socially and economically backward castes. The Janata Party government set up the Mandal Commission in 1978. In 1980, the commission found that the upper and the middle castes held 90% of class 1 services despite being only 20% of the population. This created this data, this empirical fact created the basis for the argument that there are in addition to the, the groups uh, and communities classified as scheduled caste and scheduled tribes, there are other socially and economically disadvantaged groups in the Indian society who, whose, uh, whose basis of uh, inequality is based on their social status and hence in the caste system and therefore by the same logic they should also be eligible for affirmative action programs. Lower caste, lower caste groups, according to the Mandal Commission, were concentrated in unskilled, semi-skilled, low-paid work in the informal sector. Caste resources provided important links to access work in this insecure sector. Hence, it is very, very difficult for people with not a lot of caste resources to be able to access sources of employment um, in, in the informal sector. It subsequently recommended 27% of quota for OBCs, other backward caste in central government jobs and higher education institutions. Social justice in the context of Indian politics came to be identified with affirmative action for disadvantaged groups. And even today, as different communities in India identify their uh, social and economic disadvantage. Uh, the, the dialogue between these groups and the government is usually conducted around the discourse of affirmative actions and reservations in um, government employment as well as in institutes of education because public sector employment 
and education are seen as the two uh, important means by which people can improve their living standards and also reduce the insecurities, the various insecurities that they have uh, faced uh, generationally uh, in the context of the Indian society. In recent times, there has been a lot of focus, growing focus on religious minorities. Uh, Muslims constitute 14% of India's population. Recent government reports highlight the poor social and economic condition of the community. The community suffers from high levels of poverty, low literacy rate, holds a very small share of secure government jobs and has poor access to credit and housing. The reason the, why the focus on this particular community is because the reason why uh, their condition is, uh, is uh, poorer as and their living standards are uh, lower in comparison to other social groups is essentially because of the societal discrimination that they experience and which has been identified as one of the main causes of the social and economic disadvantage faced by the community by the Justice Such a Committee report. In 2013, eight years after the Sachar Committee report on the condition of the Muslims and creation of a Ministry of Minority Affairs, a post Sachar Evaluation Committee was set up and headed by Professor Amitabh Kundu. This committee is also called as the diversity. They produced a diversity report uh, which shows that poverty levels among Muslims uh, remain higher than the national average between 2004-05 and 2011-12. And this was a significant finding because this is also the period in which the Indian economy was doing exceptionally well. Essentially what it translates into is that although the economy is doing well and uh, jobs are being created and incomes are being generated and businesses are flourishing, the benefits from all these streams of economic uh, uh, possibilities is simply not uh, being shared or being made available to a large number of a population simply because of their religious identity. Muslims continue to be left out both from government jobs and the wave of our urbanization that is taking place in India. However, as of now, there has not been much progress in discussion about affirmative action policies for Muslim population. A, com a community that has increasingly come into focus in very recent years as a possible candidate for affirmative action is the transgender community. India has 600,000 people belonging to the transgender community as per the 2011 census. Transgender Persons Protection of Rights Bill 2016 has created some provisions uh, which ask for stringent punishment including imprisonment up to two years for offenses against the transgenders. Transgenders who do not belong to scheduled caste or scheduled tribes may be declared members of the backward classes and are entitled to reservation under the OBC category. The bill also calls for necessary amendments in the Indian Penal Code to cover cases of sexual offenses under transgender persons. The transgender community have also historically experienced a tremendous amount of discrimination and uh, harassment and uh, crimes committed against them. And this is essentially because of a non-normative sexual orientation that the society has uh, found difficult to accept and hence sought to marginalize the community. And they do const constitute among the most uh, invisible, rightless and uh, poorer communities in the context of India. The transgender bill has been criticized by the activists because they have compared it to the radical declaration, the radical judgment that the Supreme Court made in the context of the recognition of transgender rights in 2014, which is also called the Nalsa case. In 2014, the Supreme Court of India had declared that transgender persons have to be legally recognized as a third gender. This order had also asked the center to treat transgenders as a socially and economically backward and declared the third gender category to be the basis for admission in educational institution and employment. Essentially what it means is the basis of 
inequality here is sexual orientation and therefore uh, the creation of the transgender identity as the third gender becomes the basis of positive discrimination under affirmative action policies. The activists have argued that the complex identification process outlined in the 2016 bill goes against the landmark Supreme Court ruling. Under the Nalsa judgment, the court had referred to international human rights law that requires states to take all possible measures to respect and legally recognize a person's self-defined gender identity. However, the complicated bureaucratic many-tiered process which the 2016 bill cre has created essentially means that people may not be able to establish themselves, establish their identities as transgender or third gender and hence uh, become eligible for the limited provisions that the bill is making uh, as affirmative action. The third group uh, for which there has been recent activism and movement about inclusion in under affirmative action policies is persons with disability. The Rights of Persons with Disabilities Bill 2016 replaced the earlier Person with Disabilities Act 1995. The new bill creates uh, different criteria for recognition and some new provisions for affirmative action. One of the important changes the new bill is bringing about is making disability as an evolving and dynamic concept, which essentially means that if a large number of people are counted as being disabled, uh, definitions could change and uh, new people could become included in this provisioning system. As more as our knowledge and understanding of uh, disability grows, the types of disabilities listed under the bill have been increased from 7 to 21, which means more and more people will be brought under the umbrella of uh, social provisioning. Reservation in government employment has also been increased from 3% to 4% for certain types of disabilities. Members of community mostly designated as, mostly the members of communities traditionally designated as scheduled caste and scheduled tribes and other backward caste under the Indian constitutions have been the recipients of quota based access to elected bodies, educational and employment in independent India. Uh, these have been the primary recipients of affirmative action policies. In recent times, however, reservation has been expanded to include women. There is an ongoing debate about identification and inclusion of new groups such as Muslim religious minorities, differently abled people and transgenders, groups that have also experienced a range of disadvantages based on discrimination in the Indian society. The recognition and inclusion of new groups is in, in increases the, the, the state's commitment towards creating equality in a society as um, the world moves towards more and more complex social arrangement and competition over scarce public goods increases and this has also generated a large number of controversies in terms of people who wish to have their social and economic disadvantages counted as a specific types of a specific type of issue that needs to be addressed by the state through special policies. Thank you.